For sequence convergence proofs, we'll be using two definitions to prove convergence or divergence. So for convergence, we'll prove that for all epsilon greater than zero, there exists a capital N greater than zero, such that for all small n, that's natural, the small n greater than the capital N must uh, imply that En minus L, the absolute value of that is less than epsilon, and to prove divergence, uh, we show that for all m greater than 0, there exists n greater than 0, such that for all uh, natural little n, if n is greater than n, then uh, a n must be greater than capital M. For 2n over 4n minus 1, we can use our previously learned calculus techniques to find the limit of this as n goes to infinity. So since it's just a single power polynomial over a single power polynomial, we can just divide the 2 by the 4 to get half. Then we can just plug in our a n minus l into the uh, the formula, and then we have to let epsilon greater than 0 be arbitrary, and we can choose an n, and for this we'll leave it blank for now, and then we're going to do some algebraic manipulation to find out what our n will be, so let's uh, bring the common denominators, so then we can uh, simplify it down to half uh, 4n minus 1, and then we have 1 over 8n minus 2. And what we can do is we can actually just make this less than epsilon. So in order to do that, what we should do is we should minimize the denominator so we get something that's bigger. If we show that the bigger thing is smaller than epsilon, then we show that the previous uh, function was also smaller than epsilon. So in order to do that, we're going to replace the 2 by 2n because from n equals 1 to uh, infinity. So we can use that and we can end up getting uh, 1 over 6 epsilon as our n and prove the statement we were looking for. Now for this a n where we have 2 to the negative n minus 3, well 2 to the negative n is just going to be uh, an exponential decay. So if you draw the graph, it's uh, regular exponential decay would go down to 0. But since we have a negative 3, uh, we can translate that down to a negative 3. So the limit as n goes to infinity for this one should be negative 3. And uh, we'll use our epsilon uh, n uh, formulation to prove it. So we want to show that for all epsilon uh, n greater than 0, n a n minus l less than epsilon. We let epsilon uh, greater than 0 be arbitrary, and then we choose an n, leave it blank for now. Uh, we suppose the antecedent, and then to get epsilon to appear, we could get log base 2 of 1 over epsilon, and that would give us epsilon. But here's the thing about the log function. If uh, the epsilon is greater than 1 would give us something that's less than 1 inside the log. And log of something less than 1 is negative, and n can't be negative. So instead, we should add 1 to uh, log uh, base 2, 1 over epsilon. And that way, we can ensure that n is always positive. Now for this factorial example, we can just expand it out and be left with uh, 1 over n plus 2 times n plus 1, and we can just claim that that is equal to 0, just a constant over something to the power of 2 in the denominator. So when we decide to uh, choose our n, if we take the right-hand side, we'll get and uh, expand it out, the denominator. We can just minimize the denominator to get something greater, and we can just take out the two positive terms here, 3n and uh, plus 2, and then we can just choose 1 over epsilon, the square root of that, and we'll get epsilon. So for this example, we can use the fact that sine n is bounded between negative 1 and 1. So the a n is going to be either 1 over n or negative 1 over n. Either way, it's going to go down to 0. So the proof is again going to be similar to uh, what we did before. Pick an arbitrary epsilon and uh, choose an n that's blank for now. So for sine n, um, since we already said that 1 is the highest possible value of sine, we can bound it above by 1. And uh, since we picked a higher value, we can just uh, make this less than epsilon. And so we can just choose 1 over epsilon, and that satisfies the equation. So for this one, if you recall, the tan graph is just an infinite sequence of the same repeating shape. Uh, when we take the graph of arctan, we 
uh, restrict it between negative pi by 2 and pi by 2. So the highest possible value of arc 10 is going to be pi by 2, and that happens when you go all the way to an infinity. So therefore, you have something that's bounded over an e to the n. Therefore, it should be 0. So we're going to claim that the limit is 0. So we're going to use the, uh, uh, the limit definition again, and we're going to let epsilon greater than 0 be arbitrary and choose an n. So what we're going to do is we're going to suppose the antecedent. We can take the 0 out, and then since arc 10 is, the, since n is greater than 0, arc 10 is always going to be greater than 0. So we can take the absolute value out. And as we said before, as n goes to infinity, arc 10 is going to be pi by 2. So we can bound it above by pi by 2 over e to the n. And then we get uh, pi over 2 uh, times e to the n. And similar to how what we said before, so we're going to have to use uh, ln this time. And instead of making it pi over uh, 2e, we're going to add 1 to it to ensure that it's not negative. And we're going to use that as our n. And that will be able to give us uh, pi over 2 pi e plus 2. We can take out the 2 to minimize the denominator. And we'll be left with epsilon. So this is an example of where the sequence diverges. Um, the most dominant term is the cubic term, so clearly it goes to infinity. So we're going to have to modify the definition here a little bit. We're going to have to add m to it, and we take away the absolute values as well, and make the sequence uh, greater than m. So no limit here, just uh, the sequence is greater than m. We're going to do the same thing as before. We're going to let m be arbitrary, and we're going to choose an n. That's the only difference. We're going to suppose the antecedent, and then we're going to uh, do algebraic manipulation. We're going to keep minimizing it, and we're going to take whatever we minimize to be greater than m. That way, the original thing will also be greater than m. Since we get n cubed minus 2 remaining, we can just let n be epsilon plus 2, the cube root of that, and if we span that out, we'll get our epsilon. This one is pretty similar to the previous one that we just did. Uh, it's just square root n plus 1. So again, it's going to go to infinity as n goes to infinity. So we just have to show that the square root of n plus 1 is greater than some m. And we let that m be arbitrary and we choose an n. So we can just uh, suppose the antecedent and then we can just minimize it by taking out the 1. Acquire m by putting in m squared, not epsilon squared. So to get an idea of what the n to the 3 fourths function is, the square root function is smaller and it goes to infinity. So the base n to the 3 fourths should also go to infinity. But since we multiply it by negative 2, it should go to negative infinity. So like the previous examples, we're going to use m. But instead of making it greater than m, we're going to make it less than negative m. And then we can just choose the uh, arbitrary m and the n. And since uh, the small n is greater than the capital N, we can that small n multiplied by a negative will be smaller than the big N. So we can just find the value of m to satisfy the equation. Uh, in this case, it will be m over 2 to the 4 thirds, which gives us negative m. So this example combines what we did in the last few examples. So we know that e to the n is just an exponential, so it's going to go to infinity. And we are going to prove that it diverges by showing that e to the n is greater than m. We're going to let m be arbitrary and choose an n. We're going to suppose the antecedent e to the n is going to be e greater than e to the big n. But we're going to get m by picking ln of m plus 1 and then minimizing it. So for this one, we can do common denominators to see that we're going to get a uh, quadratic on the bottom and in that case we're gonna get it to equal to zero so it's just a standard function that we dealt with earlier we're gonna let epsilon be arbitrary and we're gonna pick uh, n we're gonna suppose the antecedent and we are going to take the right hand side and we're going to minimize the denominator by taking out the positive n and then we can just let it equal to uh, let n equal to uh, square root of e one over epsilon. So this is another case of uh, bounding. 
Uh, since we have a bounded constant on the numerator and some power of n on the denominator, we're going to get 0 as the limit. So we just have to prove that the function is less than epsilon. And we're going to let epsilon be arbitrary. And n is something that we're going to find out. Um, so cos 2n is bounded above by 1. So we let it, uh, we maximize that. And then we can maximize it further by minimizing the denominator. So we get 2 over square root n. And uh, that's just always positive. From here, we can just l pick our n to be 4 over epsilon squared. And that way, we can get epsilon. Now, what if you have something that's negative 1 to the n? Well, the graph of negative 1 to the n is constantly oscillating. So we don't really know what happens at n at infinity. So we can guess that it diverges because we don't have a definitive answer. And in order to prove this, we're going to use contradiction. Since our definition says that for all epsilon, this should hold, let's pick an epsilon and see if it still holds. And now let's try our function at a odd value of n at uh, 2k plus 1. So negative 1 to the 2k plus 1 is the same thing as negative 1 to the 2k times negative 1. And negative 1 to the 2k is the same thing as 1 to the k. And 1 to the k is just 1. So multiply that by negative 1, we get negative 1. And then we can end up isolating for L. We get 40 less than L less than 42. And then we can carry out a similar sort of steps in our even version. And what we end up getting is that L is between 42 and 44. L has to be between 40 and 42 as well as 42 and 44. And that's not possible. That's a contradiction.